This is Shankar. I'm going to tell you about certain principles of uh, my experiences with the Bhrigu Nadi system. And uh, here I'm going to tell you what happens when the planets are in a particular position and then when they are in the yearly chart. In any, in any astrology, horoscope or anything, what the Bhrigu Nadi system says is rotate all the planets. Each planet has an aspect to the other planet, whether it's 12th, whether it is second, some are shaking hands, some are fifth and ninth, they are good positions, seventh, not great, you know. So there are a lot of principles where there is, it's like a movement, you know, you have to understand them. So I cannot explain all that in, in a video, but there are certain principles I want to explain to you which would be very important for you. One is that suppose you have a planet in the ascendant and then you have a planet in the seventh house. Suppose you have moon in the ascendant and Venus in the seventh house. When in the annual horoscope, Venus goes in the seventh house and moon comes, where Venus goes in the first house and moon comes in the seventh house. That is the interchange. That is the planet in the ascendant goes in the seventh house and the planet of the ascendant goes in the first house, whichever may be the planet. When in the annual horoscope they change. That is they, 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 they change in the sense that the planet in the in, in the first house goes to the seventh house, the planet in the seventh house goes to the first house, the annual horoscope, that year is going to be very bad for the native. Now let's come to Saturn. Saturn when it is in the seventh house and when it comes to the seventh house in the annual horoscope, it is an excellent time. You will have a very good time. It's one of the best time for profession. Third, Saturn in the fifth house, when it goes to the ascendant, a very bad period. Saturn in the fifth house itself is bad, but when Saturn goes to the fifth house in the annual horoscope, in the Varsh Phal, if you call it Hindi, Varsh Phal mein agar wo pehle ghar mein chala gaya, aur aapke horoscope mein paachwe ghar mein hai, to it will create a lot of issues, especially with respect to all the issues of fifth house as well as uh, the Kartatsa of Saturn. So that you have to decipher and that is very clear, I'm sure you understand that. Third, if Jupiter is in the first house, in your horoscope, this is the ascendant, that is the first house, in your natal horoscope, then when Saturn in the annual horoscope conjuncts this Jupiter, when Saturn in the annual horoscope conjuncts this Jupiter, it is will be one of the worst periods for most of the things like family, finance, gain, fortune. It will be a very bad period. Remember that. Whenever Mercury is in the sixth house, uh, no, sorry, whenever Venus is in the sixth house, in your natal horoscope, when, to repeat, Venus is in the sixth house, in your natal horoscope and Mercury goes in your ascendant in your annual horoscope, in your Varshpal, wherever Mercury goes in your ascendant, it's an excellent period for wealth, prosperity, enjoyment, buying good things and a very happy year full of, you know, uh, registered life, you know, the good, 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 good things of life. Of course, it will be relative to a lot of other things. But a very good period is bound to happen. Whenever moon is in the ascendant, whenever moon is in, sorry in the tenth house, in the annual horoscope, in the ascend in the natal horoscope, whenever to repeat and delete the last uh, four five words, whenever moon is in your 10th house in your natal chart and when in the annual horoscope moon again comes to your 10th house in your Varshpal when the moon is in the 10th house it will be a very bad time for your father father will go to the hospital he will have problems with his court it will be court cases profession some aspect 
of father will be very very bad it will not be a good year for father generally be sure about it. next saturn and mercury together are an excellent combination and when my saturn and mercury are in the ninth house in the natal horoscope as well as when they come in the annual horoscope also <coughs> in the ninth house to give you a big fortune they are very good friends now let me come to planets like rahu and ketu rahu is a planet which is governed by Mercury. Mercury is the boss of Rahu. Rahu executes the order of Mercury. Mercury is the person who decides what has to be done. Rahu executes it. If it is good, it will execute it. It has got a tendency of amplifying it. It has a tendency of giving it suddenly. You know, Rahu has its own characteristics, but it executes the orders of Mercury. So whenever Mercury is bad. Rahu becomes negative. Assuming Mercury is in the twelfth house, Rahu will become whatever ascend, whatever may be the Rashi. As per your ascendant, Mercury in twelfth house is not good if it is alone. Mercury, if it is with Sun, it will make a major difference. But Mercury alone in twelfth house is never good. And when our Mercury is in the twelfth house, it will. Create problems, and therefore also we can Rahu. Now Rahu is controlled by which planet? Rahu is controlled by Mars. So whenever you have Mars in the twelfth house, Mars in twelfth house is excellent. Mars in twelfth house in your horoscope controls two negative planets, planets which give and also take. I mean, they are not negative plans. When I mean, if they are not able to do negative, I mean, if they want to do negative to you, they'll spoil your life, finish it. And if they are good, they make the billionaires, and they make the millionaires, they make the prime ministers. So that is is the potential of Mercury and Rahu. So whenever Mars is in the twelfth house, and it is going to do, it is going to control Rahu. And to some extent, therefore, it controls Mercury. So Mars in twelfth house will control Rahu and Mercury. Also, Mars with Rahu is very good. Then also, it controls Rahu. There are other places also where it has effects of fifty, seventy-five percent and all. But we would discuss that. It could be negative also. So that I am not discussing here. What I am going to tell you here is the planet which controls Rahu is Mars, and Mars in twelfth is strongest. You know, remember that. Similarly, the strength of Jupiter defines the strength of Ketu. Therefore, Ketu is always considered by me, and my experience says Ketu talks about general happiness, and it is important. General happiness is important, and children, you know, especially the male children. So, Ketu and Jupiter have a relationship. If Jupiter is strong, Ketu is also strong. So there's a relationship between Mercury and Rahu, Dragon Head. The relationship between Jupiter, Ketu, and Dragon Tail, and they have a very close relationship between them. So that's the report. One more aspect which I want to leave you before I end the horoscope because it's already nine minutes so long video is how to see Mars negative because Mars. When it becomes negative, you tend to cheat. You tend to do a lot of things. Very good in these days. You have to be deceptive. You have to cheat. You have to lobby for the wrong things. Uh, uh, you have to show what you are not. So these things are all governed by Mars. Olden times are not supposed to be good, but it is important in these days. I'm not saying that. But a very negative Mars also makes a, and not supported by a good Jupiter. If you have Negative traits, but you can cover them up by Jupiter. You become a big man. But we talk about that. That's how you see horoscope. You can't see horoscope in isolation. You have to have a 360, 360 degrees view. Horoscope is 360 degrees, and 
each degree has uh, impact on you. So that's how a horoscope generally has to be seen. You can't go to that uh, depth. And even the 1008th part of a horoscope can be seen. There are calculations you can do it. But then that's different. And then nothing is outside. Everything is inside you. No planet is outside you. All planets are inside you. As outside, so is inside. So that's important. So when you talk about uh, 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 when when we when we were talking about Mars, how to see a person? It's my view that a person who has got his pupil, which is towards the up in the eyes. I mean, you know, pupils. We've seen some people, you know, the pupil, the black pupil, goes up. It goes up, and the white portion is more. Be a little careful of those people. When they open the eyes, you know, the, the pupil which is there goes up and the white portion is more, the pupil, the black pupil is tending more towards your upper side. Be careful, if it is very up, be very careful. And the people who have pupils who are well placed, the white is less, the black, the pupil looks good, the eyes look good, a very good person and has a fairly good mass. This is a general thing which I've seen, I've seen thousands of people, so I can by the face, make out what a person is like. So that is important when you see an also. With this and this video, thanks for listening to me. You can contact me at connectingstars.gmail.com. My website is shankarstudy.com. And thank you very much. Bye for now.